Um, and we talked about what's a meaty question, what's a question with purpose, like what's a question that others that is worth others' uh, attention. And this is a list of some of the questions that they came up with. Obviously, I helped them with some of the language. Um, so at this point, I just hit the library to find the data sets for them. Um, and if you ever decide to do this, some hot tips when you're searching for data sets, like <laughs> it's like an all star. I spent like a week in the library every day after school, and all of the librarians in the LA Public Library just they know me. <laughs> they help. They spent hours helping me. And then um, I also reached. I was surprised. I reached out to a lot of think tanks while I was doing the research. I reached out to them and professors from studies, and they were like super willing to give their data to me. Um, so at my school, so obviously at the beginning it was all about money, but I started to see over time there's a perspective shift. At our school there's like a rite of passage in sixth grade where all the students have to basically um, present in front of their families and peers about how they've grown as a student over the year. And a lot of them actually chose my stats lesser unit. And this is a paraphrase, but there's this one kid, Aiden, who got up and almost made me cry because he said, uh, basically, at first he was only interested in the money prize, but then he realized that he was doing the work because he liked it and he knew it was important. Um, but here's the big uh, impact. So this team Greece. So at the school I work at, I got, I, it was my first year last year, or two years ago, so I got team grade as a fifth grader. And uh, we don't have grades, so we just write these reports. And so as a practice, at three points during the year, I have kids free write about how do you feel about math. When I got there, out of like my 20, whatever, plus the 30 girls, one said that they like math. Uh, team Bree, like the first day of school, she like cried when I gave her my opening assessment. Her parents had to have meetings with me like four times because um, she had like anxiety. She said that she would like get so freaked out whenever she worked on a math problem that she like black out. She said like her mind would go blank. Um, this was her question that she came up with, her research question. Um, her family was sponsoring a El Salvadoran uh, asylee at the time, and she wanted to know about uh, why he like, came, basically. So I found this article on The Economist, and this little portion over here is um, basically all of the homicide rates per 100,000. Um, in El Salvador, and so I emailed the Agarape, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it, institute to see if I could get that data set, and then they linked me to the head of that, which was this guy, Robert Maga, who founded this institute like 10 years ago, and um, is also a senior advisor to the UN World Bank, big, big, big dude, and he was so excited, so he gave me all of his data set, was super excited, um, and I started facilitating this conversation between Team Greed and this like world-renowned scholar. <laughs> this was her poster. Um, I sent it to uh, Dr. McGaugh afterwards, and he sent it all around. He sent it to our mayor, he knew Mayor Garcetti. He sent it to the LA Times, and then he eventually sent it to the CDC. So, um, this correspondent from the CBC came to my classroom where all of my students presented their posters. It wasn't just Ingrid's group, um, but they focused on her and they wrote this big, long article about uh, her experience, or Kevin's experience, the site she was sponsoring. But it was so powerful to see this girl who was like crying the first day of class, confidently standing up in front of like a camera talking about her analysis of gun violence and immigration rates, so that's a quote. Um, and this is another picture of her and a quote, which just like kills me. So, <laughs> I'm thinking about Tinker's mathematician, right? Like after that project, at the end of the year, all but two of my girl students now love math, they wrote. And the two that don't love math still, loved this that they talk about the stats, even as actually being uh, their favorite unit. So now I'm thinking about like every year I try to at least provide one experience where kids are creating math and sharing it in public 
right, to both draw interesting meaning validation from the larger community. I think about like when they leave my classroom, what are they gonna remember? What are those like, what are those, like both, how are they applying the critically to their world, but also like what are those map identity affirming experiences that they will take to their, uh, like as they move on through, through map. Um, I mean, this is the thing I'm, on my next site I'm gonna think about which is like how will they, obviously this is like, especially with my female students, this is like new to be confident in math. So like how are they gonna carry that identity uh, past um, when they move on to higher levels of mathematics? Um, yeah, there's only two. Last two years ago, uh, my students, we looked at the um, Muslim ban and some of the justifications and my kids looked at it mathematically and they, uh, it culminated, they really wanted to do a protest. And so here's an article um, that, um, where kids actually went to City Hall to protest the Muslim ban using the stats that they came up with in our class. And they spelled my name wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, that's it.